Thank you to our sponsor, Focal. Don't miss Focal's 40% off sale on its entire line of Quora speakers. Visit focal.com to learn more. And welcome to another episode of the Acoustics Podcast. I'm your host, Ian White, Acoustics Editor in Chief. Today's going to be the start of our end of year editor's choice series. We have a number of uh, articles that have already dropped on the website, and you can find them at acoustics.com. But um, as editor in chief, um, it is one of my roles at the magazine to, you know, detail some of the better products that I've had the opportunity to listen to and watch um, in 2022. And we're going to be covering almost nine categories this December. And this video is meant to be a accompanying, I guess, video to the article that has already dropped on the editor's choice, my favorite wireless loudspeakers of 2022. Now, wireless speakers are clearly not new. Bluetooth speakers have been in existence at this point for probably, I guess, almost close to a decade. But 2022 felt different for me. Um, as an editor, um, I have a different sort of perspective on this than the rest of our writers because I have access to more equipment than anyone else. And you know, in my role, I get invited to a lot of private listening events, um, I guess dealer demonstrations, factory tours, and I've had a chance this year to listen to a lot of wireless loudspeakers. Um, in some cases, I've had a chance to listen to two or three competing loudspeakers um, in the exact same space, which made for a rather interesting demo. And you know, over the past twelve months, I've probably listened to at least twenty. So I feel that you know I've had sort of a wide cross section of products to sort of you know write about this year. But I wanted to detail some of the better wireless loudspeakers. And I'm talking about high-end wireless loudspeakers. I'm not really talking about the portable variety that you can take with you to the beach, although the Dolly Catch G2 was certainly my favorite portable wireless loudspeaker of 2022. But it's I'm talking more about the type of wireless loudspeaker that you're going to use um, to actually replace a traditional two-channel system with passive loudspeakers and an amplifier of some kind. 2020-22 definitely felt like the year that high-end wireless loudspeakers you know, really, really took a huge step forward. Um, and I say that because, you know, <sighs> Some of the brands that are really pushing, you know, wireless, high-end wireless loudspeakers a lot right now are the more traditional, you know, passive giants. Companies like Kef, companies like Sonus Faber, um, companies like Polk Audio, companies like, um, I'm trying to think, Dyn Audio is a great example, and I'll be talking about Dyn, Dyn Audio in this video. But the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of companies have realized for the last number of years that wireless high-end speaker systems are truly going to be the future of both mainstream consumer audio, but obviously high-end audio as well. And while I'm sure there'll be plenty of pushback from those who think that, you know, we'll always have passive loudspeakers, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I think that by the year 2030, passive loudspeakers are going to be, let's say, almost on their way out. And I know that'll come across as, you know, ludicrous to a lot of people, but Eight years from now is a lot of time in the technology world. And while there'll always be brands that will manufacture and sell passive loudspeakers, it's very clear that the market is moving on and that most consumers are not necessarily interested in buying, you know, multi-component large passive, you know, speaker systems anymore. It just, it doesn't make sense. And if the high-end audio industry is going to grow over the next decade, this has to be the focus. And I know there'll be manufacturers of amplifiers and network players and phono stages and turntables and every other component and passive loudspeakers, obviously, you know, who will disagree with my assessment. But, you know, one only has to look at really what's going on in the space to understand that, you know, some if some of the biggest brands in the industry are starting to introduce multiple new pairs of wireless loudspeakers every year and cutting back on the number of passive loudspeakers in their lineups, then you know that should be a sign to audiophiles that you know if companies like Sonus Faber and Dynaudio and Kef um, and even 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 more mainstream brands like Klipsch and Polk Audio um, are starting to sort of invest more money into the wireless side, um, it's really kind of the writing on the wall. So you know let's sort of you know jump into it really quickly. I don't want any of these videos to kind of be too long, but I want to give sort of a readers a good cross section of what I had a chance to sort of listen to this year. 
And I'm going to start actually with the $599 Q Acoustics M20 HD wireless speaker system. Um, you can find the review on acoustics.com. It'll be in the description box in the video below. And the Q Acoustics M20 is not really a wireless system. It's, I mean, it's it doesn't really work via Wi-Fi. It's a Bluetooth speaker. Um, but what's really fascinating about it is that if you like the Q Acoustics sound, so I'm talking about, let's say, the Q Acoustics 3030i or even the 3020i, um, this is really a powered Bluetooth version of those speakers. Um, and obviously, you know, there is not a phono stage, unfortunately, included in the speaker, so you have to add your own. But I mean, if you like the Q acoustic sound, it has sort of a meaty, sort of more impactful bottom end. If you like sort of the, you know, mid-range resolution of the Q acoustic speakers and the slightly polite tweeter, which I think is the case for a lot of their speakers, you know, the Q acoustics M20 HD is a really good option. And while you can't see it on camera, because obviously the camera on my iMac is facing towards me, but I use a pair of Q Acoustics M20 HD wireless speakers every single day. And I guess that's the highest possible compliment I can pay any product. Um, you know, I basically went out and bought a pair and I listen to them while they work on this magazine every single day of the week. So the Q Acoustics, you know, M20 HD is a really good option at $599. Um, you know, it's built well, it's heavy. You know, there's a lot of sort of, you know, bulk and heft behind it. And you definitely feel like you're getting a substantial passive speaker that just happens to have, you know, amplification built in and Bluetooth sort of uh, compatibility. And, you know, it's a very full and detailed sounding speaker. Um, it's not bright at all. And, you know, if, if, you, if the 3050i, which is their large floor standard, is not your cup of tea, this is a little more open and sort of detailed and transparent sounding. So um, it's very, very easy to recommend this speaker. You know, it's $599 US. You can find it on Amazon and Crutchfield and a number of other online dealers. And if you can get a chance to listen to them in your local hi-fi dealer, that's even better. But um, a really, really attractive loudspeaker that works well. Um, I do wish it had a more dedicated uh, control app. That's definitely a deficiency. But other than that, um, you know, sonically, I have very few complaints with this speaker. And it's something that I'll probably have on my desktop for years to come. Another new speaker that sort of has not really gotten a lot of attention, with the exception of really us and Doug Schneider at Soundstage, is the Triangle Borea BR03BT. Now, this is a substantially more expensive speaker than the Q Acoustics M20. It's a $1,000 Bluetooth speaker. Um, but what I really like about the Triangle, and I've had a chance to hear them sort of um, on the dealer end a couple of times, I love the industrial design. Um, if you like sort of the sort of typical French looking loudspeaker with light woods and sort of a more flashy front baffle, in this case, they offer blue and green and white, and black. It's a really attractive speaker. Um, you know, the woofer, it, it's a white woofer with a black, um, you know, a black face plug. And it's just it's just a really really well made speaker. It doesn't it doesn't feel like a wireless Bluetooth speaker. You know it's heavy. It's well made. I've, when, when you kind of wrap your knuckles on the side of the cabinet, you know there's there's a solidity to it. And it also includes actually a very high quality moving magnet phono stage. And the the one time that I had to hear it, I had the chance to hear it with a turntable. I was really surprised by how good, I don't know who made the funnel stage for Triangle in this case, um, but it's really, really good. And I listened to it with actually Ortofon and Grado high output moving magnet and moving iron cartridges, and I was very impressed. Um, the Triangle is actually a really impressive $1,000 um, you know, wireless Bluetooth speaker. Um, it's actually something that I'm seriously considering buying for my dining room in 2023 because it kind of matches the rest of the furniture in the room itself. And it's a very, very sort of open, transparent, detailed sounding speaker. Mid-range resolution is off the chart with the speaker. Vocals are very, very crisp, but you know they have nice body and texture. And it's a really, really nice and pleasant speaker to listen to for a long time. The tweeter has actually got a lot of extension, but it's quite sweet. Um, there's a nice degree of airiness. Um, it never gets hard. Um, I've listened to the speaker playing Metallica and ACDC and a few other really sort of, I guess, more difficult heavy metal bands. And it never became uncomfortable listening to the speaker at you know, above conversation level. So a really nice speaker from Triangle. That's the Triangle Borea BR03BT. 
And you can also read about it on the website. I have a number of write-ups about it that have appeared in the last two months. Loudspeaker that I just finished reviewing, and you can find the review on our homepage, is the new KEF LSX2. Now, at $1,499, the LSX2 um, is not going to be an affordable option for a lot of people. And I know people wish, you know, that KEF could make its sort of wireless Bluetooth, Bluetooth speakers, you know, more affordable. But the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, KEF has invested a lot of money in R&D and sort of the build and construction quality of their wireless speakers. The Obviously, the LS52, the LSX2, the new LS60 uh, floor standing uh, wireless speakers, which are amazing. But, I mean, you're talking about a speaker that's, you know, almost three and a half times, four times the price of the LSX2. So, you know, at $1,499, this is not in a, this is not really an inexpensive loudspeaker. Um, the pictures actually make it look larger than it really is. It's actually the type of speaker you could actually pick up and hold in the palm of your hand. Now, in my case, I have really big mitts. So for me, you know, uh, setting up the Kef LSX, I could carry a speaker in each hand, you know, and walk over to the media credenza in our den. Um, I had this system set up in under five minutes, and that might be a record. Um, one of the things that I notice about the KEF is that while you don't have to use the supplied Ethernet cables to connect the primary to secondary speaker, they actually sound better when you do. And you can actually transmit, you know, in terms of Wi Fi and between the two speakers, you can have a proper 2496 sort of, you know, um, essentially high res system if you're using things like Tidal and Cobas. Um, the KEF LSX2 also supports Tidal Connect and Spotify Connect. And I was very, very sort of pleased at how easy it was as to actually sort of stream from both Spotify and Tidal um, to the LSX2 using my iPhone 12. And the, you know, there was almost no lag in between the time that I picked the track and pressed play. Um, the, the app on the LSX, the, the KEF Control app, um, is not, let's say, as slick and fancy as the Sonos S2 playback sort of connect streaming app. Um, but Kef has made some meaningful changes to it. Number one, I think it's a little more responsive. I think it's easier to kind of get all of your various streaming platforms, you know, onboarded on the platform. The EQ options are much better. The ability to kind of set really, you know, what type of room you know, that you're listening to the speakers in, whether, you know, you're listening to it on a desktop scenario or against the wall, the ability also to, you know, change, I guess, the overall range of the speaker if you're using a subwoofer. Now, Kef makes the KC62 subwoofer, which is obviously a great match for the speaker, but then all of a sudden you're talking about, you know, a system that's well over $2,000, bordering on $3,000. So, you know, the Kef LSX2 with its sister subwoofer, um, all of a sudden becomes a rather expensive system on, uh, on its own. Um, you know, the, the tonal balance is definitely on the warmer side. You know, detail is definitely slightly restrained, but, you know, certainly, you know, adequate enough for me. Um, very, very good speaker when it comes to imaging. I'm not an imaging freak, and I'm not so, so, not so sure that I would, you know, buy the matching, you know, floor stands for this. Um, I would probably use the pad to that uh, Kef cell. Um, if I have a complaint, it's that the uh, stands for the speaker are really expensive. And whether you choose the um, the floor standing stand that is available from Kef that, that, that matches the speaker based on its color, or if you choose the desktop pads or even the wall mount options, Kef is charging a rather um, exorbitant price for all three. So I don't think you necessarily need any of the stands, but if you want to place the KEF LSX out in your room, you will need a pair of the KEF, the KEF stands, and those are almost $550. Well, they're close to $500 US for most retailers. So all of a sudden, you're spending you know, well over $2,000. Then you have to ask yourself, should you spend a little bit more and buy the LS52? You know, that really depends on your budget and you know what you want out of the system. Um, I would say the major strengths of this system are, number one, it's so easy to set up and use. So if you're looking for a set it and forget it type of, you know, wireless loudspeaker that you can control from an Android or, you know, an iPhone, the KEF LSX2 um, gets an A-plus on that regard. Setting up the app was very easy. It's very easy to use the app during play. Um, Tidal Connect and Spotify Connect work perfectly. 
And, you know, it's just, it's a very, very pleasant speaker to listen to. It's definitely a better speaker the louder you push it. Um, you know, I tend to listen a little louder with some genres of music. Um, I didn't find the LSX too boring with the volume sort of turned rather low. But, you know, once you kind of, you know, push the volume a little higher, up, almost to like conversation levels, the LSX2 becomes a really, really room-filling type of speaker. And, and it, that's surprising based on the size of both the driver and the size of the speaker itself. Um, I've played the speaker for a number of people in our den who are not audiophiles, and they were actually both very intrigued by the technology because they, I showed them how to control it uh, via their iPhone or their Samsung Android, Samsung phones. And, you know, it's just, it's a well-made speaker. Um, it's available in five color options. I was sent the Terrence Conran designed, uh, well, I guess the, um, the Soundwave version, which is sort of, I guess, a lightish goldish brown with sort of the Soundwave fabric pattern on the rest of the enclosure. Not my favorite look of the five. I think if I was to buy a pair for myself, I'd probably buy the white with the sort of, I guess, silvery uh, woofer, or I might even consider the the blue with the gold. Um, I just find the Terrence Conran one doesn't really blend too well with the rest of my house, but sonically, a very, very solid product. The fourteen ninety nine price tag is going to defer some, you know, deter some people, but you know, um, Kef speakers don't come inexpensive. I mean, that's just the, the reality. If you buy a Kef speaker, you're going to pay a premium for it. Um, you can also find a review of the LSX two on the website. Um, a really impressive speaker. Kef did a great job with it. The next speaker I want to talk about actually is the Sonus Faber Omnia. Now, uh, I reviewed the Omnia towards the beginning of twenty twenty two, and to be honest, I mean. This, this is a lifestyle wireless Bluetooth speaker. Um, you know, it's also rather expensive at basically $2,000. It's $1,995 US. Um, the pictures actually make it look a lot larger than it really is. Um, one of the things that was interesting was that when um, Sonus Faber shipped me one of the original, re I guess, review samples of the speaker, the box looked, the box was enormous. In fact, when UPS dropped it off, I was a little surprised to th you know, thinking that the speaker inside was actually you know, two or three feet long. And, you know, the speaker itself, you know, is sturdy. It's, and it's very attractive. Um, it, you know, it's really, you know, Livio Cucuzza did an unbelievable job with his team on the industrial design. But, you know, it really has to be sort of looked at as more of a lifestyle speaker as opposed to what I would say is more of a, you know, stereo two channel, you know, sort of a, a primary and a mass, a primary and a, a secondary speaker in your listening space. You know, this is a speaker that's meant to be placed on top of a credenza um, or a dresser, or even, I would even say, depending on the, you know, your living room setup, you could even put it inside a bookcase um, if the bookcase can deal with the weight. You know, I love the top touch panel. You know, it's a very, very sort of sleek, beautiful piece of industrial design. Um, I expect nothing less from Livio Cucuzza. I mean, the, the team at Sonus Faber, you know, <laughs> basically have earned their stripes designing some of the most attractive loudspeakers in the world. And I expected nothing less from the Omnia. A um, couple of things about the Omnia. It does not have, you know, its own sort of, I guess, real control app or something that's, you know, really slick, something that would, you know, compare to the Sonos S2 app. You know, but from a sonic perspective, this is a really room-filling sort of, warm, boisterous type of speaker. Um, you know, it doesn't have the low end impact, let's say, of the Triangle Borea, and it certainly doesn't have the low end impact of the Kes, of the CAF LSX2. Um, you know, but it has this sort of the, you know, stereotypical Sonus Faber sound, has a warm mid-range, you know, slightly, you know, sweet, somewhat restrained sounding treble to a degree, um, but it's very spacious sounding. You know, and the fact that it has drivers on three sides, you know, sort of aids in that. Um, I love the top, the top panel, which is a, basically like a touch panel. And if you look in the photos, you're probably not sure, you know, what those lines are that are engraved, you know, into the top of, of the Wenge or the black oak, you know, but, but that's a touch panel. And if I have one other criticism of the Omnia is that it actually comes with a external dongle if you want to connect a turntable to this speaker, which I have. I, I had the Omnia in-house for three months. I connected a number of turntables, including the Project Debut Pro. Um, I connected a number of my own vintage turntables from Thorin's and obviously using external um, you know, tables and cartridges. You know, the, 
the Omnia can work with multiple legacy products. And, and I kind of understand why they chose to go with the dongle because they were trying to save space inside the cabinet because obviously this enclosure being the size that it is has amplification it has the drivers it has the, the you know the, the construction of the sort of the speaker itself there's a lot going on inside the omnia um you know it would be nice if they had had separate inputs you know both digital and analog so you could just plug your turntable directly in but i haven't heard too many people complain about the dongle but it's just something to know when you, when you go through the box if you buy one you do have to connect that dongle and you do have to actually you know click the switch on the back if you want to switch between a phono you know phono or a digital source so that's something to think about is it worth $1,995? And this is something that I grappled with slightly during the review because you know $2,000 at the beginning of 2022 felt like a lot of money for a pair of wireless loudspeakers. But you know between the uh, between the build quality, the industrial design, the sound quality, um, you know, and you are buying a Sonos Faber speaker, you know, and once again, you know, you can't expect sort of you know to pay $500 for a handcrafted speaker. I mean, Sonos Faber does a very different level of fit and finish on their speakers. And, you know, the Omnia is a, is a success also from the perspective that I have seen, I'm one of those people who makes a mental note of high-end products that I see in retailers and cafes, restaurants, and offices and people's homes that I visit. And I've seen the Sonos Faber Omnia in more cafes and people's homes in the last 12 months than any new high-end product. So obviously that's going to be great news for the folks at Sonos Faber that, you know, the Omnia is sort of making it into the non-traditional audiophile homes and businesses. But, you know, it just, the Omnia just works from a size perspective, from a sound perspective, the, you know, the way that it sounds. I mean, it, it is a really good sounding wireless loudspeaker. Um, is it the best wireless loudspeaker on the market? Absolutely not. But, but is it, you know, good for what it does? You know, does it offer you value? Is it you know, a product that you're going to own for a long time? I would say so. And the Omnia is something that I would seriously consider owning myself for um, a bedroom, um, for a dining room. It would be a great piece in a dining room if you have a nice sort of wood credenza or media unit and you want to have sort of a wireless option to listen to music while you eat or when you're entertaining. The Omnia is great. In fact, when we had, when we had the Omnia in house, I moved everything off our dining room credenza for three months and just connected a turntable to it and sat and listened to music almost daily through it. And when we had dinner company over on the Sabbath, um, you know, people actually asked nine times out of 10, what is that? Who makes that? How much is the price? So, you know, first impressions, you know, is definitely a strong uh, aspect of this loudspeaker. And I think Sonus Faber, you know, touched on the right nerve for people who aren't necessarily audiophiles but want something that looks sophisticated and high-end and sounds obviously a lot better than the less expensive bluetooth speakers the finest final wireless loudspeaker i want to talk about today um, is actually a really expensive one from dyn audio and there are three speakers in the focus lineup in 2022 um, there's, there's a bookshelf, there's a smaller floor stander, and then there's the Focus 50. The Focus 50 is the only one I've had a chance to hear in a couple of um, dealer rooms, dealer showrooms, and it is $11,000 US. And I know for a lot of people, that'll sound like an absurd amount of money to spend on a high-end, I guess, wireless loudspeaker. But at the end of the day, I actually think products like the Dynaudio Focus 50 are the future of high-end audio, and not just for mainstream consumers, but audiophiles as well. Um, when you consider how much you might spend on a comparable sounding system, and just, just based off what the Focus 50 sounds like, both in terms of its extension, presentation, total balance, and just overall sort of you know sonic qualities, um, you would e you could easily spend two or three times that amount of money and perhaps not even achieve the sound quality of the Focus 50. So at $11,000, when it, you, all you really need to do is add a wireless device, or if you want to add a term table, you have to essentially run it into the back of the primary and use your own phono stage. But this is a complete high-end system. And, and for I know $11,000 for a lot of people is you know an impossible amount of money. But as time goes by, you know, this type of technology is going to become more affordable. And if one could buy a really almost, I don't want to say state of the art because it's too early to call, call the Focus 50 state of the art. But if one was to look, be looking for a, you know, 
high-end audio floor standing system in 2022 that offers offers a full range sound you know something that supports you know bluetooth apple airplay google chromecast you know title connect spotify connect internet radio um you can obviously use you know cobas you know via rune or via bluetooth um you know this is a very impressive speaker I mean, this is the type of speaker that I could see replacing my entire system with in the next couple of years. Literally just keep a CD player and a turntable and get rid of amplifiers and other speakers, and this would be it. Um, it's a four-range speaker. It's a big speaker. Um, I mean, it's getting closer. I think it's almost close to 50 inches tall. Um, each loudspeaker is 72 pounds. So in case you're wondering what you get for your $11,000 US, um, you're getting essentially a high-end audio system and a floor-standing speaker that sounds like a much more expensive, you know, rig. And, you know, what really stood out for me were number one, the connectivity options on the speaker has multiple analog and digital inputs. There is a single subwoofer output um, on the back of the primary speaker. This is really what I think a lot of the high-end brands need to focus on going forward. If you're going to convince the next generation of people to spend between five and eleven thousand dollars in this case on a high-end audio system, this is the way to do it, especially if you have people who have already bought into even high res streaming because they use Tidal or Cobuzz or even Spotify Connect. Um, you know, people who have you know invested in a turntable and don't want to get rid of their turntable, but don't necessarily want to have a, se a separate phono stage or a preamp and an amplifier and a pair of passive speakers and a room full of wires, which is the obvious other benefit of this because you're cutting the number of cables that you might use in a system by probably you know two thirds with this system because really you have to plug it in. Um, what I would personally do in a system like this, I would run my Rune Nucleus probably into this type of system and have access to my entire digital music collection, both the CDs that I've ripped to hard drives, but also um, my Tidal, Spotify, and Cobuzz accounts through Rune. So you would effectively end up with only a few components in a system. I wouldn't even have to see the router. I wouldn't have to see the Rune music server. And if I could have a turntable on a credenza, you know, five, 10 feet away and not see anything else and have a minimal number of cables, this is clearly the future. Sonically, um, I could live with this speaker for the rest of my life. Um, I can't afford it right now. And, and maybe if I sell off a couple of my systems, this is something that I would buy. But, um, you know, if you're interested in sort of a true high-end, full-range type of product, the Dynaudio Focus 50, in my mind, is one of the best I've heard so far. Um, the bookshelf speaker is next on my list because I'm really curious to hear if the, the small, I think it's the Focus 30, I'm really curious to hear how the Focus 30 sort of sounds in comparison, you know, for a lot less money. But at the end of the day, if you are looking for a high-end wireless speaker system in 2022 and beyond between KEF and Dynaudio and PSB with their Alpha IQ, um, between Triangle, um, between Q Acoustics, you have no shortage of options. And, you know, being, Bowers and Wilkins has their formation loudspeakers, you know, it, it I think, you know, there'll be audiophiles who will say, well, that's not a real high-end speaker. And my argument would be, no, actually it is. Because if you have the ability to stream high-res audio and you have the ability to connect a turntable or an, another high-end digital source like a CD player to a high-end loudspeaker, that is a high-end audio system. The fact that it simplifies the process and you control it with your smartphone doesn't make it any less viable or any less useful. And I think, you know, it's clearly the future. And if I was going to be recommending to people, <coughs> people, excuse me, what I was, what I would buy in the next couple of years, any of these wireless high-end systems from the brands that I mentioned would be a superb option. Now, coming up on our next video, I'm going to be talking about my favorite phono cartridges of 2022. And there are a number of really good ones this year from Grado Labs and Sumiko. And I'm trying to think who else I'm going to be talking about. I already covered Denon last year, and I also covered a number of new products from Nagaoka. So I think this year's list is going to focus on Sumiko, Grado Labs, oh, and also Goldring, a really, really top British brand that doesn't get enough press um, in the United States, but that should change. And now that they have a much better importer over here, you will be reading a lot more about Goldring. In fact, we already have a number of reviews written up already on the site that you can find. Um, in the high-end audio section, the Goldring E3 and the brand new Eroica um, HX. 
Um, there are a lot of really, really good affordable phono cartridges in 2022, and some of the best are coming from those three brands, Gold, um, Grado Labs, Gold Ring, and Samiko. Thanks for watching this week, and I'll have more to say about all this next week.